I'm Dr. Vita Rattan and this channel is dedicated to skincare for skin of colour. So I get asked all the time about black soap. Does it work? What does it do? What are the side effects? What should you look for on the packaging? Which are the best bl black soaps and which are the worst black soaps? Who should avoid it, etc. So I thought the best thing to do was to do a deep dive investigation to the top selling six black soaps on the internet. The way I did it basically was I had to find the ingredients list of each of these six and I had to then form my own conclusions on each product and tell you the pros and cons and who should avoid what. So I hope you find today helpful because I put a lot of effort and love into today's video. So starting off, what is African black soap? So it's created in Nigeria and its base are plantain skins. Now it seems to have these mythological incredible benefits which include sebum reduction, it includes uh, reducing your breakouts, fading scars and even brightening the skin. So it does a lot of different things. Um, however, despite the name, black soap is actually not black. Black soap should be brown. It is free of sulfates, fragrances and parabens. And actually out of those three, the one that I'm most happy about is fragrance. Fragrance is the number one cause of contact dermatitis in the world <laughs> because anyone that applies skincare that's been manufactured by a company tends to have fragrance on their skin and that does lead to sensitivity, etc. So that doesn't happen with black soap and actually that's one huge benefit. Okay, some of the key ingredients that they add are shea butter, which is moisturizing, and that's great for everybody. It has coca pods in it, and they actually roast this, and that's what leads to the dark color of the soap itself. That can also lead to an exfoliation effect. So I would avoid this if you have dry skin, dry sensitive skin with eczema, for example. It also tends to have coconut oil in it. I've not found a formulation without coconut oil in it. And coconut oil can be, it is quite comedogenic. It can lead to acne. And so I would avoid this if you have acne prone skin. And for everybody else, uh, you should be fine with African black soap. One thing I would say is it can be quite dehydrating. So it is really important that you moisturize on top because you want to replace the hydration that you've lost when using it. So today I'm actually reviewing six different African black soaps. I really like two of them and I'm not a big fan of four of them and I'm going to tell you why based on the ingredients in it. So starting off with number one, which is Nubian Heritage African Black Soap. So this product has got palm oil, shea butter and glycerin, which are great for hydration. It's also got aloe, which is very good anti-inflammatory. So if you've got any irritation taking place on the skin, it can help to soothe that. It's also got tocopherol acetate, which is a very good antioxidant. So it's got a lot of positive things in this particular product. The downsides are it does have the classic coconut oil, which you would avoid if you have oily acne prone skin. The other negative is that they've got essential oils. Now essential oils, I'm not a big fan of. I will explain at the end why essential oils are not great for the skin. The main reason being that it can lead to dermatitis, inflammation of the skin, and that can lead to irritation and pigmentation later. So it's something you want to be a little bit careful about. So the next product is called Dudu Austin. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, please forgive me, <laughs> I'm doing my best. Um, so the positives of this product are honey, shea butter, and it's also got palm kernel oil, which are all very good moisturizers. In addition, it's got aloe vera, which I love. It's an anti-inflammatory as well. The negatives, however, they've got lemon and lime acid in this product. It's an AHA, it's a very small molecule. AHA means alpha hydroxy acid, it's a very small molecule. It can burn the skin, it can lead to irritation of the skin. This can lead to sensitivity and maybe even hyperpigmentation. So if you wear this, I would wear this at nighttime and just pay attention to your skin. Just see if your skin is becoming dehydrated or if you're getting any sensitivity of the skin because it's almost like you're doing a bit of a chemical peel actually when you put AHAs in the skin. The next product is Shea Moisture African Black Soap. Again, it's got some great ingredients. It's got hydrolyzed oats. It's got glycerin, which is um, a moisturizer of the skin. It's 
it's got aloe vera, which is also an anti-inflammatory that we discussed, and it's got tocopherol acetate, which is also an antioxidant. So it's got some very good ingredients. However, on the downside, it does have coconut oil, which we've discussed, and essential oils. So I feel like the products which are almost over manufactured when it comes to black African soap, they tend to put things in that originally I don't think were meant to be there. And the ones that are less manufactured, that have a, a smaller ingredients list, actually are better for the skin. And I think those are the products. If you can find the almost not so manufactured products, those are the ones that give you those amazing results because these ones that I've spoken about right now are all highly processed and actually that's why they're almost black when I told you remember at the beginning that African black soap should actually be brown so the next product is actually my favorite for the reasons I've just mentioned it's called 100 Sky Organics 100% Pure African Black Soap it basically has all of the positives it's a simple ingredients list and it doesn't have the negatives i.e essential oil so the positives are it's got palm oil, palm kernel oil, which are great emollients. It's also got your vitamin E um, and it's got your aloe vera. Yeah, so those are the key ingredients and they're not too many ingredients. That's a huge plus point. And for me, the biggest plus point is obviously no essential oils. It does, however, still have coconut oil and cocoa butter. And so I would say avoid if you have oily acne prone skin because it can be commodogenic. But I'd say actually for everybody else, they they're going to benefit actually from this particular black soap and the next african black soap i actually really like as well which is called incredible by nature so again it's got great emollients it's got palm oil it's got palm kernel oil it's got shea butter it's got your vitamin e and the best bit it has no essential oils in it and it's got no acids in it too so it's a very simple clean ingredients list it does have coconut oil so avoid if you obviously have acne but again, for everybody else, I think they'd really enjoy this particular product. And it's actually how skincare should be for skin of color. We actually can't tolerate things that are too aggressive for our skin. We don't want things that are over manufactured where things are being put in to almost fulfill consumer demand, but are maybe not good for the skin. Everything that goes into your skincare should be good for your skin. And that really is the fundamental key when it comes to skin of color. You can get away with more when you've got Caucasian skin, you can burn your skin, you can do what you want with your skin and you won't get pigmentation with us. If we irritate it too much, it takes us a long time to recover and it can lead to hyperpigmentation. So we do need to be more careful. And the last one, actually, I would say is, in my opinion, the worst black soap, and that's Dr. Wood's Naturally Raw Black Soap. I feel like it's been over-manufactured, and it's steered away from the raw ingredients that made black soap great in the first place. So they've added hemp seed oil, and they've got panthenol in there. They do stick with the shea butter as well, which is good, which is an emollient, and they've got glycerol too, which is also emollient. The negatives, however, is they've got coconut oil, but also olive oil. So that's very different to the original recipe. And olive oil, again, is commodogenic. In addition, they added fragrance, just straight fragrance, not essential oils or anything else, fragrance. And fragrance is the number one cause of contact dermatitis. And so we really need to avoid it. In your skincare, the one thing I would say to look for in the back of packaging is the word perfume or fragrance. I'm going to do a whole video. If you want me to do a whole video if you on fragrance, can you just write down fragrance below and I will tell you all the little trick keywords that they put at the back of packaging to hide that they actually have fragrance. Sometimes they don't, you know, clearly say it. They'll use other words. If you want me to do that, I will 100% do that for you. There's a few other things I want you to know about black soap. So my number one favorite is Incredible by Nature, unless you've got acne. So if you are looking to purchase black soap, that's the one that I would recommend. The next thing to note is the color of black soap. So don't forget, black soap shouldn't be black, it should be brown, and it does vary in color. The reason being that you take the plantain and you basically roast it, and the longer you roast it, the darker it is. But the soap itself isn't gonna be uniform. So it's not you know, all one color. Also, before you purchase it, look at the back of the packaging. Make sure it doesn't use the word essential oils. Make sure it doesn't have acid in it um, and make sure there's no, the word fragrance or perfume is not in it. There's over manufacturing of the original black soap recipe 
and they're not things that are good for your skin. I wouldn't mind if these are, you know, great ingredients for your skin. They're not, they're troublemakers for the skin. And so we need to be a bit careful. Also note, sometimes black soap can be rough textured. And so people say, you know, you can exfoliate with it. Don't use it like a loof because again, it can lead to micro tears and skin of color and we get hyperpigmentation. So if you want to use it, use it gently. And that's quite an important thing to note. So who is black soap great for? It's great for people who've got combination skin. I would avoid it if you've got dry eczema prone skin and I'd avoid it if you've got oily acne prone skin. For everyone else, I think it's a very good product. If you purchase the right one and always always please make sure you apply your moisturizer on top because you do want to replace the ceramides you want to replace the hydration in that top layer of skin don't forget that the majority of skincare has been designed for caucasian skin and so this channel really is dedicated to showing you the best products for skin of color the things that give you Things that are most effective, but don't cause any irritation or inflammation of our skin. So what I did is I created a free guide for you uh, that teaches you the best ingredients, the best combinations, the things to avoid. And I put the link down in the description box for you below so you can just download that. I urge you, please do read that because I put a lot of love into it. <laughs> uh, also, please, can you write down below? Yes, if this is the sort of content you want to see, if I'm doing a good job for you say no if I'm doing a bad job for you because <laughs> I need feedback. If there are any other brands that you want me to review, you know I love doing in-depth investigations of ingredients and I'm a bit of a geek like that. So <laughs> if there's anything you want me to do, please can you write it down below. And thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you as always.